For a deeper look at what all this means, we turn to Leon Panetta. He served as the director of the CIA and then secretary of defense during the Obama administration. And Steve Simon. He served as senior director for Middle Eastern and North African affairs on the National Secu Security Council staff during the Obama administration. He's now professor of international relations at Colby College. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Secretary Panetta, I'd like to begin with you, if you don't mind. How big a change in U.S. policy is this latest move? Well, I, I think this is a, a serious foreign policy blunder that uh, is going to undermine United States leadership uh, and further weaken our role in the world. I mean, we're putting a knife in the back of the Kurds who basically fought alongside of us in trying to destroy the ISIS caliphate uh, and in, in, in basically leaving uh, the Kurds vulnerable. Uh, we've also opened up the possibility that Syria will go into the hands of Russia, Iran, uh, and that ISIS will further strengthen itself. So from every aspect, uh, I, I consider this uh, to be a very serious blunder on the part of the president. Steve Simon, you have long argued that this was a long time coming, that the alliance with those Syrian, or the Kurdish, rather, forces there uh, it had a, a very short shelf life. This was inevitable in some ways. Do you agree with this decision to withdraw U.S. forces? Well, I think it was the right decision, but it was really not well prepared, as Secretary Panetta points out, I think quite eloquently. Uh, it was known, uh, certainly since last winter, that this was the president's inclination, and he was determined to do it. Uh, he was talked out of it uh, at the time. But in the interval uh, between the president's aborted decision uh, last November and the decision he's made uh, just uh, today, n nothing was done to prepare the ground uh, for the withdrawal. And this, to me, is, uh, is just, I guess it's, a, it's astounding. Um, because there were options that the United States could have pursued that would have reassured Turkey uh, in a way that uh, removed its incentive uh, to invade uh, Syria under conditions uh, that, we're, that we're looking at uh, now. But none of those steps uh, were really taken. And they weren't taken because uh, there was a view on the part of the administration that um, uh, it would entail talking to the regime in Damascus. And this was something that the United States didn't want to do. Now, uh, you know, on one level, that's understandable. The, the regime in Damascus is, is repugnant. But uh, if the Turks are going to be assured or reassured that the PKK won't be a security problem for them, then uh, the, really, the only way to accomplish that is for these areas of Syria uh, that are now administered by the Kurds uh, are reinstated uh, into uh, the Syrian state. Steve Simon, do I, I take that, that would, to mean that, that you be, do that I take would be this okay for the Turks? Should I take this to mean that you disagree with the president's decision? As I said, the president's decision uh, is is perfectly legitimate, I think. It makes a lot of sense. But the ground hasn't been prepared for that, uh, for that movement, and it could have been. And it wasn't because the parties uh, uh, that are involved didn't use the time available to them between the president's decision last November to withdraw and now. Uh, and, and that's deeply regrettable. So the question uh, that we face is how uh, best to implement the President Trump's decision in ways that don't lead to serious disorder, civic disorder, in the areas of Syria that are administered um, uh, by the Kurds and, and their Arab allies. It's a it's a very large area, and and Let, as, allow me uh, allow me to put that report then to, pointed out. It allow me to put that to Secretary sorry. Panetta. There is there a good way to implement this decision? Is there a way to do this in a way that you think? Um, does not lead to a potential resurgence of ISIS forces or doesn't put our Kurdish allies on the ground at risk? Well, there's no way to do it when you basically give up the only leverage you have, uh, which is the presence of U.S. troops in that region. That's why the president reversed himself when he first made this decision back in December, uh, and he retained our forces there. If our forces are there, then we can 
negotiate with uh, Turkey. We can negotiate with Syria. We can negotiate with others in terms of how this transition ought to take place. But once you immediately pull out U.S. forces without that preparation, you're essentially saying you're on your own, uh, and Turkey is given an invitation to basically invade Syria. Uh, those are consequences that are going to hurt our credibility, the United States' credibility, with allies. We depend on allies. We depended on the Kurds to help us destroy the caliphate. To suddenly leave Syria and say to the Kurds, you're on your own sends a signal to other allies not to trust the United States. Steve Simon, does this hurt our credibility with other allies? Who would trust us after this reversal? I, I think allies are constantly evaluating uh, the reliability of U.S. commitments. In this case, I think what, what gets lost is the fact that the Kurds had their own reasons for joining us in this anti-ISIS operation. They were acting in their interest. And one of those interests was the hope of U.S. support for some kind of autonomous arrangement for the Kurds within Syria along the lines that the U.S. had secured for the Kurds in Iraq. So uh, the Kurds were playing their own game here. Uh, uh, they're, they were pursuing their own interests. This was not an act of altruism on the part of the Kurds. At this point, the U.S. and Kurdish interests are diverging. So you're seeing a weakening of the alliance um, that uh, Secretary Panetta has referred to as a stab in the back, but it's, it's diverging interests and they can't be helped right now. Steve Turkey Simon, is a NATO ally of the United States. Very quickly, let me ask you, do you believe that U.S. withdrawal from this area could lead to a resurgence of the ISIS threat? Well, I think if the Kurds are given a choice, of fighting uh, the Turks or fighting ISIS, uh, they're going to turn on the Turks. Uh, they're going to defend themselves against the stronger enemy uh, and the more lethal one. Uh, and that, in effect, is going to damage the fight against ISIS because even though the United States has been a keystone in the effort to combat the Islamic State, the fighting and dying has been done uh, by others, including uh, the Kurds. So. Um, uh, they're going to be distracted. They don't have the strength to fight a two-front war. Secretary Panetta, what about you? Uh, there, there's no question that uh, this is going to give uh, ISIS uh, the opportunity to uh, regroup. There are tens of thousands of terrorists that are in camps that the Kurds have overseen. Uh, they are now going to turn their attention to dealing with the Turks. Uh, which means that those terrorists are going to become part of uh, the ISIS effort. So there's no question that what the president did is going to basically give ISIS additional uh, ability to reorganize and then threaten the United States. Uh, it's a terrible mistake. Steve Simon, if those fighters are released or do escape, thousands of them in detention right now, watched over by the Kurdish forces, what's your reaction to that? What happens then? Well, first of all, it's hard for me to believe that uh, these ISIS fighters uh, that we're talking about are going to make it uh, to the United States and attack the United States uh, uh, in our own homeland or really uh, have the assets, the resources, uh, the planning skill and so forth to seriously damage the United States interests uh, in the Middle East. So. Um, uh, it's, I, I'm not a big fan of ISIS, mind you, but their ability to threaten U.S. interests, I think, is really rather limited. Do, you still, so do they the pose a threat is, to our NATO allies, to our European allies? Uh, yes, I would say of a limited nature, but our NATO allies uh, have uh, considerable resources uh, to deal with this threat. And mind you, the ISIS fighters we're talking about have to get to Europe to do this. To the extent that ISIS is an ideology uh, that's extremely anti-Western, uh, well, there's no question about that. But the ideology doesn't travel just in bodies. The ideology travels on the Internet and through other channels to influence opinion of Muslim populations in a lot of places, including Europe. 
uh, the fate of these ISIS fighters in Syria, where they're still beleaguered, even if the Kurds are distracted, uh, is, uh, is not going to be a major factor in European or United States security. It will be a, a major factor for people who live in areas in which ISIS succeeds in reestablishing control uh, in rural areas of Syria. Uh, that's, that's true. But the effect on the United States interests, I think, is really you know, difficult uh, to identify. I think the key task uh, right now is finding ways to reassure the Turks, get them calmed down, uh, that the Kurds on the Syrian side of the border will not threaten their security. And I don't think that that can be done unless the Syrian regime, as well as the Russians, are brought into the equation. Secretary Panetta, I see you're shaking your head very briefly. Would you like to respond? Yeah, I, I, with great respect, that's a very naive approach uh, to assume that somehow uh, ISIS will never be able to uh, reorganize and conduct the kind of attacks that we've seen them conduct in the past. Uh, we've learned that from al-Qaeda. We learned from the fact that when we left Iraq, what happened was ISIS reorganized itself and then created a caliphate between Syria and Iraq that then represented a national security threat to the United States. I don't think we ought to assume that somehow ISIS is not going to be intent on their principal goal, which is to attack the United States. And gentlemen, that remains a threat. We will have to leave it there. I thank you very much for your time. That's former Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, former member of the National Security Council under the Obama administration, Steve Simon. Thank you.